me tell you a conversation of what a, one of the, the, the children of a blended family said. I get along great with my stepdad. The problem is I feel guilty about it. I feel like I'm being disloyal to my real dad if I talk to my stepdad about a problem or invite my stepdad to do things with me. I love both of my dads, but is that okay? And so that's what the child has in his mind, or in her mind, that I'm being disloyal because I'm connecting with my stepdad or my stepmom. And so I want us to understand not only how to look at the blended family from our adult perspective, but we have to be very conscious and cognizant of the child's perspective so that they are being, you know, there's some empathy on our part towards them and, and we're engaging them in such a way that we can say to that child, it's okay that that you have this paradox because being a stepchild or being a child in a blended family is difficult, has a lot of unusual things. And don't feel bad if you say to me as the stepdad, as your new stepdad, don't feel bad if you say to me, is it okay if I spend some additional time with my dad? It's okay. Do you, do you see my point? You have to have those kinds of conversations. In other words, I'm talking about establishing family practices that are healthy. Now, when you deal with establishing family practice, you can't circumvent the whole issue of disciplining of children. Wave at me if you know what I'm talking about, disciplining of children. Now, how many of you used to be a child? <laughs> I think all of us used to be as adults. But when you deal with children, children, they, oh, they're very complex, just like adults, just in a smaller version. And so they require disciplining or nurturing and training so that they can become emotionally healthy adults. And so you have to establish then rules up front so there's equity. Equity with the bio, your biological children, equity with your stepchildren. So no one's going to think that you're favoring your biological children over that of your stepchildren. And what I always counsel blended families to do is this. If you're the biological parent, take the lead in the disciplining of your biological children. And give it some space of one to three years so that your, your biological children get used to their step-parent before the step-parents start to really flex certain kind of parental muscle that they have not earned the right to discipline the child if they have not yet cried with the child and helped to you know, connect with the child. So that it's going to be very awkward and very messy. And so you then begin to, as the biological parent, ease that step-parent into the parental role and responsibility. Because when that step-parent is in the home, like the stepchild is in the home, they still have to provide for the emotional needs of that child. They, they're still going to help financially, though there may be money coming in from, from their biological parent. And I say maybe because you understand the deal. And so there may be monies coming in. And so there must be this sensitivity towards I got to provide emotional care and at times financial care and I have to then be eased into a process, particularly when you see a parent may not have had any children and all of a sudden you get married, instantly you have three kids. And I've seen a lot of people when they get into instant family, they crack because of the pressure. Because there's a lot of pressure when you deal with children. Not because the children may necessarily be bad, but because they have needs. They want to be loved. They want to be cared for. They want to, you need somebody to make, make food. Before you're single, you don't feel like cooking. You don't cook. Now you have children. They're looking at you. <laughs> you can't say, go cook. They're three years old. Go, yeah. They'll burn down the place. So you have to really think about those kinds of things. And so the blended family then is, is establishing house rules and the step-parent then must then have some empathy with the children regarding to the uniqueness of their family arrangement. Whether it may be they have to go to their biological parents' home every other week and every other weekend, it's a lot of confusion in the mind of children. And may I say to you, sometimes in the mind of the child because their marriage, or as you say, their parents' marriage may have dissolved by way of divorce, that that child is angry or at times blaming himself or herself. And you'll be so empathetic and so sensitive because you don't know what's going on. And then from a pastoral perspective, you'll be surprised when you have to sit with a family 
and they're going through this and there's rage in the life of a child and that child may be 10 years old or 12 years old and can't express why they're feeling the way they're feeling and they're acting out in school and their, their, their grades are dropping significantly and you're wondering maybe that kid is rude or a kid just is a troublemaker and it may not be it's just the child is hurting and doesn't understand how to communicate the hurt and that's why you have to be so sensitive as that parent or step parent in that situation so you're having a conversation and saying okay what can I do help me understand what you feel and if it requires requires that you bring in an outsider. Every blended family should have some kind of advocate. Who do you go to, assuming you have a blended family, who do you go to if there's trouble in, in paradise? You should be able to have someone that you can call. And I'm not just suggesting a counselor. It may not have to be an official counselor or a pastor. It could be a family friend that you, you agree with or you recognize this person has wisdom that can go to and bounce off ideas. In other words, to have a home that's built on the solid foundation establish family practices that are healthy.